Our last speaker is Dr. Dalit Alperovic. Uh, Dr. Alperovic teaches at Tel Aviv University as well as in a Kibbutzim College and is a recipient of the Don David Scholarship for Young Researchers for a PhD dissertation, Modernist and Ethnographic Literary Constructions of Native American Identity in the Interwar Period, of which Professor Wittnesser was supervisor. Uh, her talk today is titled, A Modernist Journey into Native American Literary Spaces. Dalit. Thank you. My academic journey as a PhD student had several beginnings. It started with a fascination by Native American literature written at the beginning of the 20th century, with an interest in American modernism and with an engagement with fiction and nonfiction written by modern American anthropologists. This journey was supposedly moving along different trajectories, but I wasn't afraid. There was no need to choose one path over the other, worry about a road not taken. Hannah's engagement with multiculturalism and multilingualism gave me the courage to explore Native American spaces her interest in alternative literary traditions and their relation to modernism made it possible for me to explore modernism in a Native American context. Hannah's adventurous spirit and intellectual generosity and curiosity gave me the courage to pursue my own questions and follow my own interests. Thus, thanks to Hannah, it was possible for me to translate disparate ideas into a dissertation. As I set out on my journey, I understood that the separate roads upon which I had embarked intertwine. Thanks to Hannah's breadth of view, I immersed myself in the interwar period, a time when modernist writers and modern anthropologists shared a new conceptualization of the meaning of culture and the role reserved to Native Americans within this constellation. This new and joint discourse on culture dissociated definitions of race from ones of culture, rejected evolutionist views, and believed primitive art was valuable. Aesthetic and scientific movements alike adopted a primitivist standpoint that saw the primitive as a source of artistic inspiration and the counter image of modern life. Native American culture became in their eyes an exemplum of genuine culture, a healing answer to the ills of modernity. Moreover, the Native American became a national forefather, bequeathing the nation a uniquely American culture and the sense of connectedness to American soil. I chose canonical modernist writers that describe Native American figures and spaces, and thus left the familiar modernist city space and entered Indian country uh, through the writings of William Faulkner, D.H. Lawrence, and Willa Cather. I immersed myself in ethnographic fiction, fiction written by native and non-native modern American anthropologists based on their scientific writing. I wish to avoid questions of cultural authenticity. The goal wasn't to consider ethnographic fiction as a source of cultural information, but to read dialogically alongside canonical modernism and Native American literature to learn more about the joint discourse on culture. I was curious to learn how Native American authors engaged with this emerging discourse and focused my attention on the writings of Darcy McNichol, John Joseph Matthews, Morning Dove, and Ella Cara Deloria. Native American modernists have generally not been read in relation to mainstream modernists. I believed that a dialogical reading could illuminate the ways in which these writers contended with canonical modernist representations of Native American identity. In addition, my reading engaged with a series of crossings over, including native and non-native anthropologists who wrote fiction, and native and non-native modernist authors experimenting with ethnographic writing. In short, the dissertation interweaved discussions of high modernist writers with discussions of anthropological writers and of Native American writers, influenced in varying degrees by both. 
such dialogical readings were meant to facilitate an understanding of the prevalence of a cultural discourse in the interwar period that crossed ethnic, generic, formal, and regional boundaries. The thesis pointed at an interesting role that anthropology played in the literature of the period. It traced authors' relations to the writings of specific anthropologists, including Franz Boas, Edward Sapir, Ruth Benedict. It discussed the importance of ethnographic discourses to literary works, whether these ethnographic discourses were based on modern anthropological theories, on evolutionist theories, or on a mixture of both. It noticed that modernist and Native American writers, as well as authors of ethnographies, exposed the proximity between these supposedly dialectical anthropological theories, namely evolutionist theories and cultural relativism, by constructing the Native American in similar exclusive terms, <coughs> excluding terms. <coughs> Analyzing the connection between literary modernism and modern anthropology revealed a surprising range of attitudes towards modernist tenets. For example, whereas Morning Dove's work echoes modern, modernist conceptions, Cather and Faulkner relate to primitivist notions with irony and criticism, and Lawrence's writing exposes an ambivalent view towards modernist tropes. Native American writers, such as Darcy McNichol and John Joseph Matthews, reiterate the modernist tropes of modern alienation and atomization of modernity as a form of a psychological deficit. At the same time, they depict Native American protagonists that are trapped not by modernity itself, but by a debilitating modernist and anthropological cultural discourse that enables the continuance of colonization. The thesis focused on the emergence of cultural, a cultural discourse that separated race from culture to define identity in cultural rather than biological terms in the context of the period's statutory definitions of Native American identity based on a biologic. The text it analyzed revealed the unstable and shifting nature of, stat of such statutory definitions. It traced the means by which the cultural discourse, supposedly pluralistic and liberal, constructed Native Americans as amodern, un-American, apolitical, classless, external to economic, political, and statutory realms in America. Various groups in American society defined themselves with relation to the Native American in order to gain or maintain privileged positions in society, while dispossessing and marginalizing others. At the same time, rather than being passive victims of such a colonial discourse, Native American authors took an active part in defining identities in politically engaging ways. By analyzing texts written by Native and non-Native fiction and scientific writers, the thesis explored the mechanisms through which a cultural discourse effectively blocked a socio-political discourse in a continuous power struggle over privileged positions in America. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, anti-racist cultural interpretations emerged as an alternative to demeaning biological interpretations. The biological approaches were explicitly racist. The cultural approaches were well-intended alternatives to the biological approaches, but led to racist conclusions nonetheless. The text I read led me to argue against what has become an unstated orthodoxy in Native American literary studies, a pattern that the scholarship is prone to. As the criticism of Native American literature and critical attention to literary representations of Native Americans have emerged and developed over the last several decades, they have tended to take a cultural anthropological approach. Sometimes they explicitly draw on, ethnographic, uh, on ethnographies produced by professional anthropologists. Other times, they draw more generally on an ethnographic perspective that measure li measures literary representation against cultural authenticity and anthropo that anthropology can supposedly establish. Such criticism adopts an uncritical positivism that misrepresents literary representation as if it were true or false reporting. Moreover, it subjects the represented object, in this case, actual Native Americans, at, to, to a well-intended othering. Such cultural readings have an apolitical effect. 
masking conflicts over power that have a far more material consequence than safer, feel-good debates about cultural accuracy and authenticity. I wish to examine my chosen works in the context of the political history of Native Americans and their relations with the federal government during the years between the world wars, the history of American literary modernism, the history of American anthropology, and the history of the last few decades of critical responses to Native American writing between the two world wars. As a result, the thesis was able to indicate the staying power of the discourse on culture in American and Native American studies. Whether the cultural discourse should be examined in a broader socioeconomic, legal, and political context, or be more radically seen as a way to marginalize and blur political, postcolonial, or socioeconomic discourses, I believed that awareness of these questions could promote our understanding of the consequences that our own constructions of culture bear today. The dissertation was born along with the births of my two children. We lived in Ashdod at the time, and these were years of uh, continuous rocket attacks. I admit there were times when my persistence and determination heavily relied on Hannah's encouragement. Whether she was in Israel or abroad, there was always an email waiting for me in hard times, signed with the words, thinking of you and your family. As the Native Americans say, Hannah, you are a true mensch. <laughs> and I thank you for everything.